Hi there everyone, my name's Jenny Mace. I'm studying for a Master's in Animal Welfare Science, Ethics and Law at the University of Winchester. This presentation concerns the welfare issues of India's bovine milk animals. Milk animals here referring to any domesticated animal kept for the purposes of producing milk. Feel free to email me afterwards with any questions you may have. So this is the outline of the presentation. I'll begin with a brief introduction, looking at the reasons for focusing on India and its bovine milk animals. I'll then examine some of the current welfare issues of these animals uh, before considering several causes of and potential solutions to the issues. I'll finish with a summary. OK, so India is currently the world's largest dairy producer and is set to remain as such, according to the OECD's Agricultural Outlook report, with uh, most of the dairy originating from buffaloes and cows. The population of India is thought to be nearly 100% religious. Up to 80% of the population follow Hinduism, around 14% follow Islam, and there are also followers of Buddhism, Sikhism, Christianity and Jainism. So the cow is often thought to be afforded great protection in India, uh, as it is highly revered within several of these religions, particularly Hinduism and Buddhism. Interestingly, the World Bank classes India as a lower middle income country, uh, but the IMF still ranks India as the second fastest growing economy in the world. So all these factors beg the question, what is the level of welfare like for India's population of over 350 million bovine milk animals? Before proceeding to answer this, I'd just like to point out that I'll be using the terms bovine and cattle interchangeably to refer to cows, bulls, calves and buffaloes. To answer this question, we can refer to a report completed in 2017 by the charity FIAPO, standing for the Federation of Indian Animal Protection Organisations. The report is affectionately called Cattle Og, and it is the first report of its kind to investigate animal welfare in India's dairy industry. Uh, this image depicts just some of the media attention it has gained. And this report investigated 451 dairies in 10 states or regions of India, and it included over 24,000 cattle. Next, I wish to point out the current farming styles across India. This table from FIAPO's report uh, lists the 10 states or regions in the left-hand column there uh, that FIAPO investigated. FIAPO chose these states as they are where the most milk is produced. This table comprises all 451 dairies um, that were investigated and splits them into three dairy types. You can see in the orange row at the top of the table that these types are mega dairies, urban or peri-urban dairies and smallholder dairies. You can also see that the most common dairy type is the urban or peri-urban dairy and that mega dairies are still relatively uncommon. Now I'll look at some of the key welfare issues highlighted in FIAPU's report within these aforementioned dairies in relation to a three-pronged approach to animal welfare, considering the effective states, natural behaviours and physical health of the animals concerned. So around 84% of the dairies investigated only um, provide veterinary attention to sick animals as opposed to regular checkups. When veterinary treatment would be sought, this would normally uh, be motivated by a drop in or absence of milk production by an animal. Uh, this means animals may be suffering for extensive periods of time without treatment. It also means that milking um, uh, of sick animals is likely to be taking place. This could potentially endanger public health. These dairies also did not follow vaccination schedules, which uh, can also lead to disease outbreaks such as foot and mouth disease. Around 79% of the dairies uh, were shown to practice continuous tethering, often on a short tether. This severely limits uh, cattle's freedom of movement to simply lying down and standing, and it severely limits their social interactions. Around 74% of the dairies were shown to separate mother and calf um, shortly after birth. And this is counter to the strong motivation that we know exists in the mother and calf um, to be together. Uh, and this causes considerable emotional distress at the time of its occurrence, as well as long term impacts on physical health in, in the future. Around 47 
50% of the dairies were shown to use the drug oxytocin. Uh, this would be to induce or increase milk let down in an animal and uh, basically this causes contractions in the uterus leading to labor-like pains for the animal. Around 46% of the dairies were shown to have unsuitable flooring. Uh, this would be hard concrete uh, which is not only uncomfortable um, for the animal but can lead to foot problems such as lameness. Uh, the flooring was often also covered in feces which can increase the potential for further disease outbreaks. So many of these um, aspects are affecting physical health which can then in turn affect um, negatively affect the emotional state and um, and also potentially the natural behaviors uh, of an animal. There are also um, questionable practices surrounding unwanted cattle management. This concerns male calves and older or sick unproductive cattle. They can be sent to uh, slaughter often illegally um, or they are severely neglected until they die or they might be abandoned on the streets. This leads to um, welfare problems external to the dairy operations but uh, caused largely by the, the dairy operations um, such as an uncared for over five million um, stray cattle population in India. Uh, these stray cattle may also be subject to illegal slaughter. There are cow shelters called goshalas, but these are underfunded and overcrowded uh, with their own welfare problems. Dairies in um, urban and peri-urban areas were shown to have the, the worst levels of animal welfare. There are, of course, numerous other welfare issues, including mutilations without pain relief, lack of shelter, highly questionable practices surrounding artificial insemination and breeding, high prevalence of wounds and underfeeding, uh, and of course, um, uh, human welfare problems related to the dairy industry as well. However, there's insufficient time to discuss these here. So is there any legislative framework that exists in India that should be preventing these alarming levels of animal welfare issues? Well, first and foremost, the Indian constitution does um, explicitly mention um, milk animals. Uh, for example, in Article 48, it says the state shall prohibit the slaughter of cows, calves and other milk and draft cattle. So it's clear that slaughter should not be happening and that protection should be afforded to all bovine animals. The Supreme Court reinforced its commitment to this in 2005. There is also the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960, under which the use of oxytocin is banned, as it's deemed a so-called FUCA practice, which is an injection of any substance into the female organs of animals solely for the purposes of retrieving milk. So that's very clear, but there are more ambiguous aspects to this act. Uh, this includes the use of language that is open to interpretation, such as animals should not be tethered for an unreasonable amount of time. So there's room for improving the specificity of the requirements in this act. There's also registration of cattle premises rules, which require anyone owning five or more cattle to uh, register their premises. It's down to the discretion of the registering authority to determine if the animal welfare is being adequately um, insured before uh, registering a, a premise. So there's room for improving the objectivity of such assessments. Also, it's worth noting that more than 85% of the premises in FIAPO's report were actually unregistered premises, so these rules clearly aren't being followed. Furthermore, there's um, so-called beef bans in 22 of the 29 states, and these vary in relation to if they uh, include bans on the slaughter of all bovines and if they uh, include bans on the consumption of beef as well. Uh, currently in power in India um, is the Bharatiya Janata Party, which is considered a Hindu nationalist party, uh, though secularism is enshrined in the constitution. It's recently tried to enforce stricter legislation, effectively banning all cattle, cattle trades for slaughter throughout the country and restricting all remaining cattle trade to those farmers holding an agriculture certificate. But after much protest, the Supreme Court has currently suspended suspended this indefinitely. 
So alongside some legislative weaknesses, are there other causes? Well, the World Bank highlights that India is home to the highest number of people living below the poverty line in the world. If people are focused on their own survival and that of their families, they are much less likely to have great concern for animal welfare. Having cattle can also act as a kind of insurance. There's the mentality that in hard times, people can simply sell the animals. Milk also has substantial cultural importance. Economically, the livestock sector supports around 9% of the country's labour force and it contributes to 4.1% of the gross domestic product. Uh, milk is also perceived as being nutritious and by most in society as a sacred gift from the Holy Mother Cow. Not only is milk consumed, but it is poured over deities uh, at festivals and used in sacred offerings at ceremonies. Moreover, there's an appetite for cheap milk among the public and a government will to appease this. Additionally, still, uh, the World Governance Indicator Project uh, ranks India in the lower 50th percentile on average when considering all of the indicators, including rule of law, corruption, regulation, political stability. Whereas, for example, the UK ranks in the top 90th percentile. This suggests a culture of non-compliance and thus legislation implementation issues too. Also, there are constitutional weaknesses. Some deem the constitution interpretive in nature. Others deem the constitution to have different weightings for different parts of it, such as the right to religious freedom uh, having more importance than the animal welfare components. Also, the National Dairy Development Board of India states that the emerging private sector uh, in the dairy industry is increasingly taking up a vast amount of the market share and this leaves smaller stakeholders to struggle, which links to the first point uh, regarding poverty. Let's now look to some potential solutions. It seems necessary for a non-religious animal welfare message to be used, one grounded in the latest animal welfare science and that will be relevant for all sections of Indian society. This will help prevent friction between different religious groups and help prevent conflict between some competing parts of India's constitution. It would also help shift the animal welfare focus away from solely the end of life stage to the full breadth of an animal's life. Dry dairies have also been suggested. These are similar to cow shelters, but are more self-sustaining in that they sell cow dung and urine to create manure, biogas and biopesticides. These products would also benefit the wider community. Cattle tags are being implemented for the first time in the state Madhya Pradesh with the aim of tracking cattle to help decrease the number of illegal slaughters. And in terms of implementing and improving legislation, well, before focus is given to this, there needs to be more research and more progress made regarding India's position in the lower 50th percentile on the World Governance Indicators Project. Nevertheless, for initial steps, the Animal Protection Index of 2014 recommends greater collaboration of India with the World Organization for Animal Health and recommends India's uh, formal support of the United Declaration of Animal Welfare. It also recommends India to incorporate formal recognition of animal sentience into its legislation where it's currently only implied. It also recommends the inclusion of animal welfare into India's education curricula. The promotion of plant-based diets is also necessary for uh, decreasing the production pressure on animals and decreasing the environmental impacts associated with the dairy industry, including habitat destruction and uh, water pollution. It would also uh, help to manage world hunger. Um, it is of note that India is a country with drought problems and where millions are hungry, and yet it breeds so many cattle that require feeding and to be given water. Compassion in World Farming recommends a global reduction um, in meat and dairy consumption of 50% by 2035. And India's per capita availability of dairy is already above the global average and set to increase further. Increasing the milk price to reflect the true environmental, animal welfare and public health costs involved uh, would help to de-incentivize the public uh, purchase of this. This is just one example of how to promote plant-based diets. Education is another. 
So despite India's historico-cultural affiliations with non-harming and cow veneration, there's an extremely high prevalence of practices in India's dairies that severely and negatively impact the welfare of its bovine milk animals, particularly within urban and peri-urban areas. As the world's largest dairy producer, there's great potential and arguably a moral responsibility to improve the welfare of these animals. And as India's cattle generally have quite low productivity, a better welfare, better profit message can be promoted to cattle owners. Yet, of course, some measures will cost more, so the government's financial and legislative input will also be necessary. Ultimately, it's possible to grow the economy and create jobs in cruelty-free ways. And for further information regarding this and how we can all play a role, please visit don'tgetmilked.fiapo.org. OK, so if you do have any questions, do feel free to email me. My acknowledgements and references follow this slide. Thank you very much for listening.